Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing well. We're going to talk about Lake Mead. We're going to talk about the dire situation in Las Vegas and uh, something that most people I do not think are realizing. Because I had a conversation, this is based off a conversation I had with some friends that are involved in the real estate market. They know the real estate market well. They own rentals uh, and they were not grasping the seriousness of the situation. And now I wanted to explain too, they don't live in Las Vegas and it's still a very serious situation. So um, I'm seeing on YouTube a lot of these videos trending about Lake Mead where they're going down. They've found a couple bodies. Um, they've um, horrible things, right? Uh, they're finding all these artifacts, sunken boats, things like that. People are just amazed at looking at this. They've also found that the first intake is now out of the water. And um, we're getting close to where Las Vegas may possibly run out of water. Now, is this a possibility? It is. Um, we are seeing uh, events that are happening, human-made, that are destroying the economies of the world and um, uh, social aspects uh, of the world, for lack of better terms. Um, but we're also seeing um, a real estate collapse that's happening. And I want to go back, before I explain the Lake Mead and how serious this is, and remind people that in 2006, when the real estate market started to dry up, and more and more inventory was hitting the market. Las Vegas was one of the booming uh, cities that were being touted through the early 2000s of being the place to go and buy, invest, and make money. We were seeing home flipping shows starting to pop up in Las Vegas because the Vegas market was hot. Uh, there was an expansion going into Henderson and other uh, uh, parts of Los Angeles suburbs were just exploding in growth. Uh, people were retiring and moving down there because they get so much more bang for their buck when it comes to real estate. And it was like the one of the hottest markets in uh, the economy. Now, when the housing bubble popped, um, Henderson was in a position where it could not sell homes. They actually, there's news stories of taking bulldozers and bulldozing homes down that weren't finished because they could not finish them. And they were gonna become either a hazard or a homeless encampment, right? So they had to be destroyed um, because there was no money in them. They could not sell them. Well, not only that, what I want people to understand is because of mortgage-backed securities and how bad it was uh, back then, Las Vegas being such a boom town and then one of the biggest, I think the biggest bust as a, on a percentage basis nationwide, it took down the economy even more because it had more of a, a pull on the negative aspect of the mortgage-backed securities market collapsing and putting strain on banks, lending institutions, hedge funds, things like that. So the scope of the real estate market was one thing, but it was because of big jurisdictions like Las Vegas taking it down because it was so much money being lost, all right? So now we are back right where we started. Las Vegas is one of the hottest housing markets. And again, you see lots of home flipping shows around it because of the, the, the scope. And again, the great migration out of California really helped. Uh, n now you have not only Henderson and other cities that are, uh, uh, suburbs of Las Vegas, you now have suburbs of Henderson. I mean, it is getting massive, right? It seems like we don't learn from our mistakes and people just race down there. They flock down there because of all the things to do and the cheap real estate. Well, it's not cheap anymore. And now we have a massive, massive crisis on our hand. That is a drought. That's a drought that's happening all around the country. But uh, in Las Vegas, it is hitting fever pitch. And the Lake Mead situation is so dire. I want people to get this, to wrap this around their minds. If the lake keeps dropping and Las Vegas is left without water, you know, people joke around about Mad Max and um, the Thunderdome and, or, you know, saying, oh yeah, zombie apocalypse is coming. I want you to imagine, if you have to close your eyes to think about this, because I think this is something very important because no matter where you are in the country, Las Vegas is about to affect you if this happens. If Las Vegas runs out of water, instantaneously, people would have to leave their homes. They would be forced to leave their homes. Think about this. I have lived in an area in California that where uh, in the last 10 years, we have experienced drought so bad that the, the people on the five, 10 acre parcels, even the one acre parcels that have their own well, their wells were punched in, let's say around 300, 400 feet. And the water basin was normally that size, but because of all the wineries that moved in, because of wine country in California, all this fake, just crap stuff that I do not agree with, 
Um, but I digress. I don't think that's real agriculture. All right, that's not going to sustain life making wine. Um, but these wineries, they 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 use so much water in California, and they dump water. Uh, it is horrible watching. They just have rainbirds just to dust off the leaves and the grapes, just to keep them dusted, right? And there's broadcast spraying over these things, water being lost, evaporation, all stuff. Well, these wineries have deep pockets, so they have deep wells, and they punch those wells in a thousand, fifteen hundred feet, right? And they literally sucked up the aquifer, just sucked it right down. And there are so many people that I personally knew that ran out of water and they were forced to, because they had water tanks, right? Because of the, their wells. They were forced to go and pay water tenders to drive up and fill their um, tanks. And now we're talking extreme measures. It's like, you are not allowed to take longer than a minute shower. You, you have to essentially scrub in a pot, you know, and, and clean up like a, a, I don't even remember the name, a dry bath, wet bath, whatever it's called. Um, and extreme measures, right? Well, in Las Vegas, uh, there's no water tanks to go fill up. You know, I mean, there's a couple older water tank systems in, in the city, uh, older cities and stuff. But what I'm saying is that there's no way to just deliver water to homes and go here. We're going to fill up your bathtub with a water tender and you're going to drink water out of it. You're going to wash your dishes. You're going to bathe, right? People will literally abandon their homes and it will happen fast. It will be an ex exponent exponential crisis. I don't, I don't even remember the right term. Point being is that it would happen like so fast your head would spin. So first off, you'd have the issue of migration out of Vegas, massive amount of population of the U.S. moving in different directions, scattering. A lot of them running into California, Phoenix area, things like that. Then what you'd have is instantaneously a drawdown on the stock market because hedge funds and um, institutions would be affected by the amount of insurance companies too, the insurance payoffs, things like that of housing that would be completely worthless. Let me give you another example. Uh, in California, you know, not only do we have wells go dry, but we had lakes go dry. And since I've been investing in real estate for about 22 years, I've seen my local area with big lakes, um, vacation spots with massive housing tracks around them, go through two cycles now where the lake goes down to like 20% of its uh, normal thing where you can't boat on it anymore. It's no fun to be around there. It's just miserable. It's like a mud pit. And the real estate market right there collapsed because people just walked away. They, they dropped prices. And then as they started to drop prices, it got worse and worse and it just exacerbated the problem. And um, only to find that two years later, the lakes filled back up. And, and, and it's crazy that people can't think that short term. And so there were a lot of value investors that came in and went, I know what's gonna happen. They bought up cheap real estate and then uh, the real estate sold the real estate later at much higher prices because of the collapse in real estate. Well, Vegas is so massive. It will affect so many, hundreds of thousands of people. And think about the industry too, the amount of money that goes in there through the casinos. And not only that, there's massive industries being built up in Vegas, huge commercial developments that have went in over the last 20 years of like car manufacturing companies, all these uh, you know, aquarium manufacturing companies. That, uh, I'm mean, trying to, first thing I think of, the like aquariums. Um, but like all these other companies, that have, industries that have built up in Vegas because it's a hub for entertainment and it's easy to do business out of there, right? All of those companies would dry up super fast, pardon the pun, with play on words. Um, it would be so fast, it would create a, 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 it could be a triggering point for a collapse, a full-blown collapse in our economy. Just like it was a triggering point in the real estate crash, back in 2007, 2006. So people are like awed by, oh, I wanna watch these videos of boats sticking out. And I don't think people are realizing what could happen to your pension fund, no matter where you are in the country, um, because of people leaving a massive city because it's desolate. You know, we don't have much farther to go. And I say that because people are like, oh, you're a doom and gloomer. Like, no, that Watt Lake is dropping fast. And sure, they could figure out a way to build a, a big pump to pump water, you know, from the Colorado River into there, but it takes so much time. And quite frankly, I don't see those plans being built fast enough. So it's that time lag between, a, you know, the, the crisis, when the crisis starts and when they fix it, to where the emotion overtakes the human beings, they flee their houses, and it would literally be like a Mad Max scenario over there. And I don't know if you've ever flipped homes or fixed up homes. When you go a while without living in a home, it deteriorates fast. It's like a life force that has been taken from it. And not only that, when your pipes run dry, 
all your seals dry up. It is absolutely phenomenal what happens to all of your, your faucets, your, your couplers, uh, everything. It is absolutely unreal. Water is needed um, everywhere and humans are needed to occupy places to keep those places in good condition. And quite frankly, we could see a massive, massive crash. But also, you know me, I'm looking at the positive side. Look at the opportunity. That happens. You gotta be ready to make investments because what's gonna happen? The cycle is gonna repeat, the lake will fill up, and everything will go back to normal. We just don't know when. But think about the opportunities as well. All right, guys, that being said, I hope you got something out of this. If you did, tap that like button and hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. The Economic Ninja is out.